Okay, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Focus Point I Health Talk by our professional. So, I'm Susan. I'm your host for today's event. We are thrilled to have all of you to joining us as we delve into the important topic of myopia control and overview. So, our esteemed speaker today is none other than Mr. Muhammad Jarif, Muhammad Noor. He is a training manager from the Training and Development Department of Focus Point Vision Care Group. So, let us welcome Mr. Muhammad Jarif. Okay, good. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so my part, uh, I'm covering a bit of topic myopia control and overview topic. So before we start, so just make it a bit more relaxed. We can just mix English and Bahasa. It's okay, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, it's not a lecture. It's a sharing station. So everyone can have uh, at least some input about the myopia control. <coughs> okay. So this is my outline for today. So I, we, we will be covering a bit about defining myopia. So everyone have to know what is actually a myopia. We get to know a bit about the myopia risk factors. Okay, so we, what kind or which group of people have the higher risk or more risk of getting myopia, or if they already have myopia, the risk of progressing faster. Yeah? So next we go to a bit of myopia management, and the last one is the key takeaways. Okay, uh, myopia also known as a nearsightedness or short-sightedness. Okay, in Bahasa they call like rabon jau. Okay, so near sightedness because you can only see near. Okay, why that happened? Because the point of focus is in front of the retina, making the distance object appear blurry. Yeah, so two reasons why you get myopia. The first reason is because your eyeballs are longer. Okay, you can see the image below. When your eyeballs are longer, the image are focused in front of the retina, which is the uh, the area where the image should be focused uh, properly. Yeah, or clearly. Then the second reason is because of your eye power are higher than normal. Yeah? The why it can be higher because of the curvature of your cornea. Sometimes some people their curvature of the cornea are too steep, making the image uh, focus in front of the retina. Okay. So people who have uh, short sightedness or myopia, they will have problem seeing far away. Okay. Normally near image are clearer except the far away. Yeah? So this is the image where normal people keep, uh, normal kids see. Yeah? So they can see properly in classroom. The bigger, uh, the, the pictures or words in the whiteboards are very clear. And even the boards in the table, which is nearer to them, are clear as well. Yeah? But kids who have myopia, you can see the image at the back, uh, sorry, image at the whiteboards become slightly blurry. So this is the simulations of kids seeing when they have myopia about minus two. Yeah? So, <clears throat> but the near image, the board in the table are still clear. So that's the reason why kids normally don't complain until they go into school. Yeah? So normally at home, they don't complain because they thought everyone see the same. Yeah? Until they go to the school, they, say, they see why their friends can see the board, but they cannot. Yeah? So they start to complain to their parents. Yeah? Mm. But as the power increase, you can see the image uh, become more blurry. And even the distance, uh, the short distance also start, start to become blurry. Yeah? So when your power are higher, this is uh, simulations when you have about minus 6 diopters. Yeah? 6 minus 600. Yeah? So when you have this high power, normally your near focus are also very near. You have to look really close to you to see the image clearly. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> so now we go to the prevalence. Yeah. So the prevalence is uh, the rate of occurrence. Yeah? How many percent people who have myopia? Okay? Currently, about 35% of world populations are myopia. Okay? About 35%. But it is expected to be 50% of the world populations have myopia. Yeah? Uh, half of the world will be short-sighted in 2050. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. See. So, yeah. So that 50% is uh, about approximately about 5 billion people. Yeah? And from that 5 billion, uh, 1 billion are high myopia, high power. Yeah. So that's why nowadays you see kids in school, maybe half of the class are already wearing specs. Yes. Yeah? 
because this is the future another two to three uh, 20 to 30 years later yeah <laughs> a prevalent concern yes, in today's correct. digital era. so this is why we start we have to go into myopia management we have to control this we have to control the prevalence if possible yeah okay so now we go to the risk factor the risk factor is the factor that make you are more riskier to get myopia or to get a uh, faster progressions yeah so the first is the age of myopia onset myopia onset is where it started yeah so if you get myopia we get short sighted at the age of below 9 years old your power will progress faster yeah mm -hmm. uh, if uh, you have two kids example yeah one kid get myopia at the age of 12 or 16 and another kids have myopia at the age of 9 yeah example so the one that have myopia earlier the progression will be faster compared to the one that have it at the 16 years old yeah so why that happen because kids at this age their development are very fast yeah if you has niece or nephew if you don't see them about three months or uh, six months suddenly they are growing taller than you yeah. right <laughs> same like the eye yeah the development of the eye are faster at this age yeah so if you are having myopia at the age nine years and below so your fast your power will progress faster so you have to be careful if your kids have myopia at this age you have to control their lifestyle okay and choose the appropriate management to control the power progression okay. yeah the next one is myopia parents yeah so this you cannot modify you can see here we cannot modify this because we cannot choose our parents right <laughs> okay so if the parents both are wearing spectacles yeah the two parents have spectacles the one in red okay the kids are 50 percent chances of getting myopia Ooh. yeah if one of them are wearing spec okay so the chance of the kids getting myopia are about 33 percent 33 okay. yeah so you can see if both parents wearing spec the kids also have the risk the and higher this, the probability yes yeah. correct so but uh, sometimes we do see both parents are not wearing spectacles uh. but the kids are wearing spectacles right yeah. so that is the reason of the environment and so right. we will do we will go to the next one mm -hmm. which is outdoor time mm -hmm. and close work activity yeah so outdoor time if you do less outdoor activity you sit in the home play tablet uh, portable game yeah mm -hmm. this is higher risk of getting myopia yeah if you are doing more outdoor activities you will get lesser risk of or if myopia. you already have myopia the progression may be fast are slower okay, okay? and another one is the close work if you do a lot of near work near reading uh, near activities like tablet phone yeah screen time your risk of getting myopia or the probability of your power to progress faster are also higher so we normally recommend less than two hours yeah of screen time or near task this is excluding the school time oh okay per day yes correct per day so meaning that if you are already coming back from the school then you have tuition you do homework more than two hours already so oh. no more screen time for you on that day yeah <laughs> so parents you have to control this yeah? then the last is a binocular vision disorder so we have two eyes mm -hmm. right so these two eyes have to work properly together yeah so if you look straight both eyes need to look straight you cannot one eye turn in then another eye look straight right uh -huh. so if this happen you have the higher risk also to get the short-sightedness yeah so if you notice uh, your kids eyes suddenly drift out or drift in mm -hmm. so have an eye check so that we can manage that disorder first yeah uh, okay so the from this all risk factors so you can see the outdoor time and the close work are the one that easier for you to control or to modify yeah compared to your uh, parents onset and the binocular visions yeah but so now we have to do some adjustment to our lifestyle also yeah okay now this is actually a symptom of myopia or short-sightedness yeah so if you no, you as a parents you notice your kids have these five symptoms immediately take them to have an eye check 
Yeah. So the first is distant vision becoming blurry. Yeah. So normally they will complain to you, I didn't see far, I cannot see far. Yeah. Uh, I have problem seeing whiteboard or blackboard. Yeah. I have problem to seeing a signboard. Okay, when they are in the car. Yeah. So this is the symptoms. So take them to have an eye check. The next one, they normally move closer to the TV. So this is related to the first one, right? Yes. Because they cannot see far, they tend to move closer. They see blur. <laughs> yeah, okay. So they see blur the TV. So that's why they move closer. So sometimes parents scold their kids, don't sit too near. But actually their kids cannot see. Yeah. So you have to understand why they do that. Okay, and sometimes they turn the height okay, to one side, to the right or to the left. So that indicating one of the eye are blurrier than the other. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So reduce performance at school. Yeah, because they cannot see whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, if you notice at standard one, standard two, the performance are very good, then suddenly at standard three, the performance drop, right? So you have to think of something. Don't scold them. They say, oh, you are not reading your book. Yeah? <laughs> Ask them what's problem. Uh, yeah? So that's why. Because sometimes, not because they don't want to study, because they have lacks of motivation. Because they feel frustrated. They cannot see the class, uh, the whiteboard in the classroom. Maybe their vision is blur. Yes. That's why they're frustrated. Yeah? Because of this problem. Yeah? The next one is complaint of headache or tired eyes. Okay? They start to complain like, my eyes feel tired at the end of the day. Coming back from school, they want to sleep yeah, because they don't have the motivation. They feel headache, they feel tired. Yeah? And the last is squinting eye. Yeah? They tend to making the eyes smaller. Yeah? They squint the eyes to see. Yeah? Why? Because when they squint the eyes, they somehow make like a pinhole effect. Yeah? So they make the, the focus better to them. Yeah? So that's why they tend to squinting the eye. Yeah? The parents have to see this. And sometimes also, the kids will rub the eye. Yeah? Yeah, because why? When they see blur, they thought like something is obstructing their visions, like dust or something. So they try to rub the eyes to remove that thing. Yeah? But after rubbing, still blur. <laughs> yeah. okay? That is the problem. Okay. So why we need to manage myopia? Yeah? So basically, we have two reasons. The first is for their quality of life. Yeah? So short-term goal, because uh, if they cannot see properly, they cannot mingle around with uh, people. Yeah? Sometimes they will have lack of self-confidence as well, yeah? because they under underperforming. Yeah? So other than that, because when you manage the power properly, the power progressions are slower, then by the end, by, while waiting for the next eye check, the vision are still okay, not totally blur. Yeah? If you don't manage properly, by the time they wait for another one year or six month checkup, the power already progressed so fast, then the visions are also already become blur. Yeah? And next one is the long term goal. Yeah? We want to preserve the eye health. Yeah? If you know, uh, if you remember the first reason why your eyes become myopic is because your eyeballs are longer, right? What happens when your eyes longer? It stretch the wall of your eyeball. Yeah? So when it stretch, it causes this all uh, complication to the eye. Yeah? So we, we, the kids who have myopia, short-sightedness, have the higher risk to get cataract earlier. Yeah? And they also have the risk of retinal detachment. So you can see at the bottom there, if their power are minus 6 to minus 9, yeah? So they have 21 percent, 21 times more risk to get this retinal detachment. What is retinal detachment? Retinal detachment is where the retina at the back, which is the re nerve layer, detached from the eye. It's like somehow like tear, tearing. Yeah. So because when your eyeball are slightly longer, it stretch the wall. The wall become very thin. It's easy to tear. Okay. And last is macular my uh, myopic maculopathy. Yeah. So this is. Uh, the degeneration happened to the eye because of the uh, myopic. Yeah? So this is why we need to manage it properly so that when they are adult, okay, at 18 years old, 20 years old, their eye are still healthy. Yeah? We don't want the kids wear the spectacles at uh, 8 years old, 7 years old, 
Then after finish university or school, then something happened to the eyes. They cannot manage themselves. They cannot find a work because of this problem. Yeah. So we have to control it before it's too late. Okay. So this is the option available. Yeah. So you have uh, myopia control lenses. Yeah. So this is the easiest uh, way lah because it in invasive. It is not invasive. Yeah. You can find it quite easy in the optical shop or spe uh, optometrist practice. Yeah. And it also have a multiple design. Yeah. Myopia control lens. It evolved already. A lot of design, a lot of new innovation happened in the past few years because of the, especially after pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find out more in our outlet. You can ask our optometrists what lens are suitable for them, uh, for your kids. Yeah. Because we have to find out your the condition of the eye, like binocular vision's condition, right? Uh, then in order for us to uh, propose or give you a solution which lens are better or best for your kids. Yes, okay? a suitable for you one. Yes, correct. The next one is contact lens. Yeah? So contact lens, they have two types, which is soft and hard. If you are here in the previous session with Dr. Uh, Shan, is it? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so she do mention about orthokeratology, about the hard lens to control the myopia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are also a soft lens available. We call it a my side one day. Yeah. So this is the daily disposable lenses where by the kids. Yeah. To control the myopia progressions. And the last is the eye drops. Yeah. Like uh, previously also mentioned about myopin. Yeah. So this drop basically will relax the eye accommodation so that. It will slowly down the uh, slowing down the progressions of the eye eye elongations, yeah, or myopia. Okay. 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 So some advice, yeah, some environmental advice that you can do in home or uh, monitor your kids to follow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So at least ninety minutes outdoor activities or be sun active, sun smart and active at sixty minutes per day. Yeah. So this is why, because we, uh, because the, one of the risk factor is less or lack of outdoor activities. Yeah, mm. so you can ask your kids to go outside. Yeah, exposed to the sunlight. Yeah, nowadays kids don't uh, exposed to the sunlight anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. why their skin are very fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So next is twenty twenty rules. Yeah, so every twenty minutes, take a break for twenty seconds. Yeah, so you look far away, about twenty feet away. Yeah, so uh, so this is uh, how you relax your eye. This is also applicable for adult. If you do a lot of computer work, digital device usage, you can follow these twenty twenty rules. Yeah, the next one is elbow rule. Make sure when you read, the distance are at your elbow distance. Yeah, so not too near. Yeah, because when it's too near, it will cause stressing to the eye. Yeah, then the last one is two hour rules. The two hour rules is. Uh, less than two hours screen time, <coughs> okay? Uh, so we don't want too much screen time to the kids. At the end, they will have problem later. Yeah. Okay. So about the screen time as well, if possible, if your kids are less than two years old, don't expose them to any screen. Yeah. Oh, below uh, two years yes, old. Yes, below two years old, don't expose them to the screen. Yeah. Because why? Because at this age. They are developing their motor skills and so on. Yeah. So kids who are looking at the screen, they normally don't move around. They sit sit still with the screen. Yeah. So they will, uh, the development of their motor skill like walking, mm. speaking, we'll interacting. Slow, uh. Yeah, will be disrupted. Oh, yeah. Okay. So don't expose or don't introduce any screen to the kids below two years old. Yeah. Encourage them more outdoor yes. activities. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Ask them to walk around at the, the grass, make their feet uh. feel the grass, yeah? So that it will develop their motor skill and sensory skill, mm. yeah? Okay. Okay, some key takeaways, yeah? So for these key takeaways, make sure you get to know your wrist, yeah? If you and your wife, let's say you and your wife both are wearing spectacles, so you have to be more careful, you have to monitor more your, your kids, kids, yeah? Because your kids have the higher risk. Yeah. If your kids do a lot of new work, yeah, you expose them with the screen time. Make sure you monitor their screen time. Not more than two hours per day. Yeah? Okay. 
then myopia may lead to the serious eye related complication as i mentioned you have the risk of myopic maculopathy you have the risk of cataract you have the risk of retinal detachment yeah so make sure uh, you know why you need to manage the myopia and lastly myopia should be managed accordingly yeah so it is not like simple um, simple management like maybe 20 years before people have myopia short sighted you just give spectacles yeah because nowadays kids have myopia faster younger at younger age okay yeah. and they do a lot of screen time not like our time yeah 30 years before we don't have screen time yes <laughs> yeah we do outdoor activities more of the time yeah mm. but nowadays we cannot blame the parents because sometimes uh, we also don't because of the safety reason, we don't let our kids play outside yeah, <laughs> without our uh, monitoring. Yeah? Yeah. So that is the reason. But we can start now, uh, start, uh, maybe we can, you bring them outdoor, go hiking, okay, go running, go picnic, yeah, so that they are exposed to UV light, less screen time. Okay. Yeah? Okay, I think that's all my part. Okay, uh, I have a question that just now I see, uh, you just now mentioned that uh, for the kids below nine years old will have the higher risk for the myopia progression, right? So for adolescent or for teenagers, is it have also higher so, risk? Uh, if this, the work tasks, the near tasks are the same, the adolescent will have lesser progressions. Yeah, the progression will be slower. Yeah, but sometimes. As you are older, you tend to have more schoolwork, homework. Yeah? When you go to university, you do a lot of reading. You did textbook and so on, right? Sometimes these lifestyle factors can make the power also progress. Yeah? We cannot say definitely that your power, your age, uh, 20 years old, your power will not increase. Yeah? It's not uh, true anymore because it's also depending on the, your lifestyle and your near activities. Okay, and the last question, are there any specific uh, advancements in technology that are being explored of myopia control? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Like the contact lens right now, uh, we already have uh, the soft lens option because previously normally they use a hard lens or a multifocal contact lenses for the kids. Yeah? Uh, other than that, for lenses as well, as well uh, the uh, spectacle lenses, they already evolved so much in the past few years. Yeah? Uh, like before, we only have minimal options. Yeah? But now, because of the advancement of technology, we have like peripheral defocus image, yeah? like uh, Hoya Mayo Smart. Okay? So you can ask around, you can go to our outlets and ask the optometrist Okay, about the lens and get to know more. Even uh, at our roadshow also, we have this uh, Hoya Mayo Smart Booth. Okay, you can ask them about the lens. Okay. Okay, thank you for sharing Mr. Muhammad Zarif today. So for our ladies and gentlemen, do you have any for further more information or inquiries? You can also look for our counter for the ophthalmologist and asking for your question. Thank you. <laughs>